Hello everyone! So for today's art class we are going to look at an artist called Don Binney. He's a New Zealand artist and he paints a lot of birds and New Zealand landscapes together. So we're going to look at one of his artworks and do our own version of that. What you're going to need is some paper, pencil, pen and I would recommend doing this artwork with either paints or pastels and crayon. It's just there's a lot of colour, so if you are going to use something like coloured pencils or felts, it might take you a lot longer. But of course, feel free to go with felts as well. So we're going to get our page and just draw the basic outline of the artwork in with pencil. Always a good place to start. About a third of the way up the page, we're going to put our line in here, and this is going to be our ocean and sky horizon line. So just draw a straight line across the page, just under the halfway mark, I would say, would be a good place to put that. So above this line here is the sky, and below this line is the land. So this is going to be a tui flying over a beach scene with some sand dunes and some hills in there as well. So this is going to be the sea. So we're going to add another line in here, straight across. This is our ocean and that's all going to be blue. We're going to add some wavy lines on the edge here. These are our waves that are they crumbing and crashing into the shoreline here so they can be Lumpy bumpy. Underneath here is where we've got our beach, our sand dunes and our hills in the foreground. So we're going to draw a range of different mountain shapes here in the foreground. But let's start down here putting in our mountain shapes. So we're going to start in the foreground here. We're going to put in some, some little mountainy shapes here. Starting from the side. Kind of bring your lines over, create a little hilltop, and then slide off down to the side there. So I'm just going to add some different little hills and create some interesting shapes. There we are, there's our hills. Now we're going to start working on our bird. So I'm just going to use a pencil to just start sketching out the shape here. So we want to start about a third of the way in from here, this is where this tail is going to be. The bird is not going to be flying straight down into the water, it's not going to be flying straight across the page, it's going to be flying down on an angle. So we just want to create that angle for ourselves so we know where the bird is going to be flying, the direction. So just pencil in a line just to give us a bit of an idea of, and a guide. We're going to start off with the tail, so we're going to do a little V on our line here, and we're going to bring this in, we're going to tuck in here, it's going to come out for the body, like that. Now if we just imagine our bird's body, it's going to come around here, it's going to be under his chin here, and his little head is going to be popping in around about here. So the two has got quite a sharp beak. There's his little head, and we've got a little curve there. And we're going to put two wings on either side of this. The wing is going to cover up this part of the body. It's good to keep it connected so we can see where it is going. So the wing's probably going to start about here. I'm going to bring that curve down and swing that wing out there. Curve around and bring our wing up there. Now the wings are thin at the end and then you can imagine all the feathers creating these curving shapes as they come in towards the body. These curves bring this wing onto the body. I'm going to imagine that that's joining up in the middle there. And there's our outline, we need to put a little eye on here. Pop an eye on 
there. Now the special thing about the tui, they've got that lovely little tuft, so put a circle underneath the chin here. This area here is, we're just going to mark this out, a little band around the neck, where they often have these little tufts of white. I'm just going to mark it out so you can see it a little bit easier. There we go, there is our outline, ready to paint. Nice and easy, we're just going to start with the background of the sky. It's a beautiful sunny sky. We don't need to add a sun, but we do want to add that nice light blue summer sky. So you're going to need to mix together some blue with a little bit of white. Now it's a good idea when you're mixing paints to add your darker colour into your lighter colour so that you don't end up wasting lots of paint. So we're just going to add a little bit of the blue into our white. That looks good. And we're just going to fill in around the sky, around our bird. The reason we're going to do the background first is because if we accidentally paint over our bird, we can paint our bird back on top again. So any mistakes that we make, we can easily fix this way. If you're using pastels, you just do the same. Go ahead and put your light blue sky in. go down into the next little section here, this is our water, so we can use a darker blue for that one. I'm going to use mostly that blue there. I'm going to make two blues, I'm going to make one with a little bit of green tone to it, so I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow in there, and a tiny little bit of white as well, so it's not all the same colour. A little bit of a blend there, we'll mix that in together. Okay, so we'll just do this into our ocean. I'm going to do some little stroking lines here. The sea has got waves in it. And we'll add in a slightly different blue here. There's our ocean. Wow, very nice. Here's the ocean. And then we've got the waves next. The waves, we're going to need some light blue and a little bit of white. A little bit of blue into here to make a light blue again. And we're just going to add in these little waves here. Little curvy shapes. And there's our water. Looking great. Then we've got all of our hills and things. So we're going to need a few different greens. So we're going to make a range of greens. If you don't have green already, you're going to need to make some. So like me, I've got just the basic primary colors that I'm working with today. So you can make pretty much all the colors that you need with your primary colors. So red, yellow, blue, and black and white. So that's all you need. If you don't have all the colors, you can make the colors. So we're just going to add some blue here, add some black as well into that one, and we're going to put a little bit of white into this one. So this is my lightest colour here, it's got a bit of white in it, and this is my darkest, it's going to have a little bit of black. So you can see I'm going to create three different greens using those mixes there. So we've ended up with three quite different greens to work with all with the same colour. So our hills at the front of the painting are going to be lighter. There's more sun on these ones and our ones at the back are going to be darker. That's just how we're going to grade the colours here. So this front hill here is going to be our lightest. So we're going to use our lovely light green. So we can just fill this in here. We're just sort of blocking out the colours at the moment. We can add more details in as we go. We're just kind of getting our colours in place first. So that's our base colour and then we can start adding a few little details onto here. So you can imagine if it's a hill in a paddock, it's going to have a few 
lumpy bumpy bits, a few grass clumps, a few little bushes and things. So it's not all one colour. So I would recommend just adding in some texture and a slightly darker, using some of your darker greens. It's the same as when we were working with the pastels. We use more than one colour in each section, so it's not all just one colour. So this next hill in behind here is also going to be quite light, but it's going to be a little bit darker than the one that we've got there. So we're going to use the next green down, so our medium green in behind here. And the same as with this one here, when we were adding a few little notes of other colours. We're going to do that as well. I'm also just going to get out a little bit of black to do some of that too. On the top of our hill, it might be more like the sun hitting it. So I'm going to put some of the lighter colour notes along here. Just imagine the sun getting onto the top of the hills. And the darker colour can be in here, in the shadows of the hills. Now Don Billy does actually use quite a lot of black outlining so we will be going in and just adding a black outline as well into that. That's our base colours there. That's looking pretty good isn't it? Here we are. Nice. Okay our next little hill here we're going to use again we're going to go back to our light colour. Fill that in with our light colour here. The sun hitting the top of that mountain. And then we're going to bring the darker green in along this edge. Bring it in behind. So we, using darker colours, cooler colours makes them recede into the background. So that's why we're using these darker colours in here. Just to create that depth. So you're just going to go and fill in your hills however you like. With whatever colour greens that you've got. We just want to make sure that they don't all blend into one. So make sure where they where the edge is along there, that you do something along that edge. You can put a little bit of black along there, create a little shadow, or use a darker green to add some differentiation so you can see the difference between the hills so they're not all just blending into one. It's coming along quite well, isn't it? This is going to be our sand on the beach. So we're going to need to make a nice sandy colour. What colour is the beach sand? It's usually like a creamy, goldeny colour. So we're going to need some white, yellow, red in there as well. That's going to make a peachy colour. So let's blend these together. So we've got a red, yellow and white. We're probably going to end up with a peach. And we're going to add a little bit of green into that mix there going to make it turn a little bit more brownie until we get that right shade of brown we're after. There we go. There's our sand, brownie golden sand in here. Great. Wow. Looking good, isn't it? Really nice. So the next step we're going to do is to add in some of this black edging around our mountains just to highlight some of those edges so we'll get out a little bit of black we're going to use our smallest brush that we have and we're just going to paint along the edge of these hills just where the hill might be butting up against another hill that's where we want to put that edge and then we're just going to blend it out a little bit Blending it into the darker hill behind. Here we are, just to add a little bit of definition there. Let's move on to the bird. So it's a tui, and tuis are traditionally a black and with a little bit of blue in their feathers, and they have a lovely white thing underneath their chin here 
and they also have these little white flecks around the neck which we've drawn in. So we don't just want to paint a whole bird black because we know that they aren't completely black but we also just want to add a bit of definition into here. So what we're going to do is the back of the wing here we're going to add almost like the light shining down onto our bird. Just mark out some areas on the wings that are going to be a slightly different colour. So for this area here and this area here are going to be a slightly different colour. So we're going to need some black, we're going to need a little bit of blue as well and then we're also going to make up a very similar colour to what you use for your sand we're going to put on as well. I'm going to add this brownie colour on first into these areas that we marked out before that we were going to keep a little bit lighter for the wings. This is like a little bit of sunlight maybe hitting the back of the bird. So we're just going to fill in some of that area there with our brown. And also along here is also where I'm going to be putting some brown. You can just do your bird with the traditional black and blue colours but the, our artist model that we're looking at this is what he did with his artwork so we're going to use that as a, our inspiration. Now while our paint is still wet it's always quite good to work with the wet paint we can blend it nice and easily. So we've got our black and we've got our blue so we're going to put our black along here along the edge of what we've just painted and you can, because that brown is still wet, if you just paint along the edge and kind of rub those two colours together, you can blend that brown and that black so we don't have a line. So there's a bit of blending. You need both your paints to be wet. So try to, maybe you might just want to do one side at a time. So add your black and then blend, so just kind of wiggle your brush along the edge between the black and the brown and that should help blend it together. We don't want a really hard edge along there. So we can just carry on with our black here, filling in the bird with the black. paint over this area here, we're going to add those little neck feathers on later, so try and remember where that was, we need black underneath, we also need that paint to dry, we're going to add a little bit of blue into here as well, into the body, so into the black, I'm just going to add some blue in here. So as we know, tuis have got a little bit of blue shininess in their feathers. And then this tail area here. These are our tail feathers. And we want to make sure that this area of the body is easy to see that it's different from the tail. So we're going to put a little bit more blue into this, which is why I've just stopped there with the black. So I'm just going to add some blue in here and then pop the black in. So we want some areas of the bird to not be completely black. Just lightening that up just a little bit with a bit of that brown. Alright, and the eye, I'm going to use this brownie colour that we've already used, just to fill that in there. And the black as well, that's looking beautiful. Hopefully this is drying out nicely, in the meantime we will work on this little curly piece here. And then, this is where all our curly tufts were on our bird. 
now that this is dry, we can go back in here and add a little bit more detail if we want to into the waves here. So we put the white on and we can add some darker wave lines into this now. And there is our finished Don Binney inspired artwork. Our beautiful Tui flying over the beach and the hills. Looks like West Auckland. So if you'd like to give it a go, you just need some paints and have a try. It's a really lovely artwork. There's been a lot more birds around during lockdown, so you may have even seen some more Tuis in your neighborhood. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have fun doing your own Don Vinnie inspired bird artwork. See you next time. Bye.